On again with Robbie Gutierrez at NAI Ball. Him and Cody do a phenomenal job, and uh, it's always a pleasure because it means the the season's right around the corner. Absolutely, Ryan. You know, it actually it started last. You know, really, it started in the twenty first and the twentieth of January, getting kicked off. We had our first results on the twentieth of January with uh, La Sierra beating San Diego Christian. First result of the year. That game included the first home run of the season. So college baseball, I guess you could say from, from our perspective, is, is officially kicked off. It's officially underway. And, man, we are absolutely excited to get this thing rolling. There's so many good ball games coming up. and uh, more Yeah, and you guys more, kick off before tournaments. anybody else does. And I, I love highlighting that because that's always the argument. And Noah Sharp and I talked about this because everybody's like, well, when the D1 <laughs> season starts, college, well, the right. college season started way before it is, that. So it's, it it's great to highlight that. Yeah, you know, we yeah. had some tough news this week with Ed Chef passing away and talk about just the face of NAI baseball, 17 over 1700 wins, 16 national championships and was a tough loss for the baseball industry. And I mean my my thing with coach Chef is as a young coach you're paying attention to all the things that he used to do with their players from a training standpoint. He made it cool to like be hard on your players. You know, I feel like everybody's got an, an Ed Chef story, no matter where you are as as an NAI coach. Uh, I think everybody has an Ed Chef story. I'm not sure if I can tell mine on here, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, everybody's got an Ed Chef story. And and the the thing is, is that, you know, the, the one thing that's not lost on us is that he is a titan of the game and he is a legend in this game. And, you know, to go uh, 1,705, with 430 losses and two ties is incredible. It's incredible. It is something that's, that's absolutely fantastic. He had uh, 114 players drafted and 16 players make the major leagues. And that's, that's the thing that we really highly recognize is that right there, that, that this is a man that, um, you know, grew the game in, in a sense at, at the, not just at the local level of what we'll call the NAI, but, across the nation with getting players into major league baseball and getting players into the major leagues. He, yeah. Cause you can talk about the auto bet all you want. It's like, okay, well they had a, a free pass into the world series. Well, the numbers itself show that he had a great program, regardless of them getting an auto bid to the world series. He had an unbelievable program for wins and also producing all Americans and major league baseball players. You know, and, and I had talked to uh, Zach Clanton, uh, who played for him in and uh, used to be the uh, head baseball coach, was a you know, former LC State Warrior and uh, was a was a JUCO head baseball coach also out there in the Pacific Northwest. And I had talked to him about it and just the, the stories that you hear, the things that you hear about him. But at the end of the day, guys like Zach Clanton are going to say that they that they loved him because that's their coach. And, you know, you really don't hear anything about him that's, you know, bad from anybody. You hear nothing but but really great things. I never got to meet Coach Chef. I, I made my Lewiston debut, uh, you know, after he had – shortly after he had retired uh, in, in 2013 with Northwood University. And so – It's a regret uh, for me not getting him on the podcast because I think we've done a good job of, of celebrating the tradition of – baseball and, and the great coaches we've had so that's a regret for me that i was not but able you know to what? get that's, him on that's the big thing is that you know uh, last year we had woody hunt on yep. with, with me at the same time last year where, where woody was uh going into his farewell tour and and you know this this level has so many great coaches and and really now with with ed chef uh gone and and woody hunt having retired it, it's really exciting to see who the next level is going to be. Obviously, Denny Craybaugh is, is also a titan in the sport. You know, I don't think anybody's won more college baseball games since the turn of the century than Oklahoma City University at any level. And so it's really incredible that we, you know, we got to see these three these three titans at the same time in, in a lot of instances. And that doesn't include guys who have retired, you know, guys who have taken two programs uh, to, to the World Series. I mean, there's two active coaches doing that right now, uh, which there's only five in history and two of them are active. So it's, it's really, we're getting to see this next level and next class of coaches step up who, who get to be like Ed Chef and, and really try to do the same thing that 
you know, he did. And it's not just about sending players off into the major leagues and, and winning national championships. It's about building men up, building men of character and developing, you know, people who are going to be great fathers as well as great leaders in our society. And I think the hard part now is you're not going to see it as much with somebody who stays at a place for, for 30, 40 years. You're just not going to see it anymore because the longevity in coaching now isn't that. I hope I'm wrong and I hope we we look up 20 years from now and we see somebody that's been at the same school for that long. I just don't know if we're going to see it again, which is something also to celebrate that someone invested mm-hmm. their entire career at the same school. You know, where, where, where my day job is right now, uh, we had three people retire and they said that we had lost something like 200 years of experience. Yeah. And that's, that's not something that you see on a regular basis, whether it's in our workforce or in coaching. Uh, we see it at, at the college football division one level all the time. Guys jump ship and it's totally normal. So the guys like that, that chef, it's the, the guys, it's the office managers is where you see it now still at the college level yeah. is you have a secretary that knows where all the bodies are buried and she's been there. And I tell <laughs> coaches that all yeah. the time. I'm like, if you're going to a new place, find out the secretary that's been on campus for 30 years and go spend time with them because they're going to be able to tell you all the ins and outs and the people that you need to know, the people you need to stay away from them. That's, that's the lifeblood of the university is the office manager. It, it, you know, and it is, it is, uh, it's going to be that, that director of operations that has been there for what feels like, you know, since the, I don't want to say a, a year because then I've, I'm dating. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I don't want to outdate anybody. I don't want to say, oh, he's been there since the mid eighties and everybody's like, what the heck? It's not even that long ago. Uh, but it is you know, now. I mean, you think it's 40 <laughs> years ago. It doesn't seem possible that the eighties is 40 years ago, but it is. You know, so, uh, but there's been directors of operations who have been there forever. Uh, you know, obviously there have been volunteer coaches who have been there forever. Uh, just people, chiefs of staff, personnel in, in the athletics department, s- sports information directors who have just built these legacies. And a lot of times, you know, we don't see it too often at this level. Obviously it'd be great. It'd be great uh, if, if somebody would stay at, you know, um, I don't want to pick on any one school in particular, but if somebody would stay at their school for 30, 40 years, the legacy that they can build in the community. I mean, you see what Woody Hunt has done in that community and how much he's loved and how much his players love him and, and just everything like that. And um, hired right, by the way, you hand it over to, to his son. Like that's, that's the right hire. Um, we don't get to see as much of that anymore either. And I, it's the right hire for me as you hand it over to his son. I think it's awesome. Yeah. I think it's I think it's really really cool to see that and and know that it's still in the family. Yeah. I mean that's a program that's been literally in in the family for for generations now. And I think that that uh, you know they they're excited for it. I mean how could you not be? That's that's where you grew up and that's where you're going to be. You know, and, and so with with the Lewis and Clark auto bid, not a thing anymore. You're restructuring and almost going back to the way they had the regional format before. And I know coaches at NAI are excited because they feel like it gives them the best opportunity to get the best teams over in Idaho. I think it is fantastic that we are going back uh, to this format. And and I'm sure, you know, you we follow each other on Twitter. You follow the the brand on Twitter, it is something that, and I could harp on this all day. I don't want to spend 40 minutes <laughs> just on this, but I really feel like outside of division one, this is the best postseason tournament format that there is outside of division one. I, I really am a true believer in that. I wish we could change some of the conference automatic bids and you know things like that where some conferences get two automatic teams i would love to do it just like division one where we're getting one bid you know but it's it's easier i think a little bit to to do it this way uh instead of having 30 at large bids we have 13 14 uh, on a good year and i think the fact that we are moving away from that regionalized play not that there's anything wrong with the way that division two division three go about their business but we will the best product in Lewiston, Idaho is the biggest thing for us. And now Lewiston not having the automatic bid to the world series, I think is, is a big deal. Is it, it's a compromise. Uh, it's not perfect yet. It's not something that you see in, in collegiate athletics um, too often where we're a host team. And I get it. The NAI has done it in the past for, for other sports, but 
where you see a host team get to the World Series. You know, they've won 19 titles, 16 in Lewiston. So that's that's a big deal. They're going to get to host an, an opening round tournament now. So I'm excited uh, to see that. I'm excited for some people to get to go up to Harris Field and experience that because it is a great tournament. It is a great place. And 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 they have enough I, history there. I mean, it, there there isn't talk of them leaving there, right? The World Series because there's so much history in Lewiston. There's no talk of them leaving there now, is there? I I really don't feel that there is, and that's fine. Cody Butler and I, you know, are are big proponents of the tournament staying in Lewiston, Idaho. Is it the most centralized location in like Omaha? No. Is is it even centralized like Cary? No. Or or even, uh, you know, Grand Junction, anything like that. It's not. And Enid, I mean, we have, we kind of have it set up now where when you think about a championship for that level of college, you think about the town that the championship's in now, which is neat. Let me grab that really quick. Yep. Oh, yeah, I got you, buddy. Okay. All right, cool. All right. um, And, you know, I've, I've, kind of looked over everybody and I'm, I'm asking this question too and does Gwinnett have a chance of repeating and and I don't know how often there's been back-to-back champions in NAI does Gwinnett have a legitimate chance of repeating you know uh, for, for GGC obviously coming into the season as the number one team in the country led by Jeremy Schiedinger I think that they, they definitely have an opportunity they did lose a lot of players to the professional level they signed quite a few players uh, into pro contracts. I think Jake DeFries is going to be a big name to watch there. That's a guy that was hurt, didn't really play in the postseason. Uh, so that's going to be a big name for him. They've had some staff there. turnover, too. And, you know, that's uh, kudos to, to Jeremy. He's done a good job with their players and with their coaches. So they've had opportunities to move on. And and that's that's a little going to probably be a little bit of a – you know, a learning curve for everybody. You've got new players and also new coaches. And so, you know, but Jeremy will do a good job and he'll get them rolling. Right. It's, it's a good thing and a bad thing because yes. you lose that consistency of, of those guys that know your system, that that already know the way that you want things. But at the same time, you obviously, as a head coach, uh, you want to send people off to the next level and the next step of their career. Nobody, I don't, you know, not too often just speaking about head coaches staying forever. You know, you don't see the, the, uh, Keith Lytle is probably the best example over at, at Oklahoma City where the guy's been there forever, and, and Keith is absolutely fantastic individual in everything he does for Oklahoma City, and uh, he's he's been there for years and years and years. So the, the good thing about this season is the NAI did not follow what the NCAA did as far as uh, eligibility, getting an extra year. We Players got that last year that were their same level. They did not get this year also in, in a lot of aspects. So really what it becomes is uh, a lot of the names that we've been saying for the past, not just one or two years, for the past three years, have now moved on in, in life. And, and we have so many new faces. There's so many teams with new faces. But then there's teams like, you know, just talking about the top 25, uh, IU Southeast, who made the World Series last year, who returns basically – everyone so it, it's going to be really exciting i think uh a, another team to watch out for the team that was wire to wire in season number one and then ran into iu southeast in their opening round tournament tennessee wesleyan that's a team to watch they returned two players in carson ford and zach hoigason who combined for like 42 home runs and 130 rbis they were old last year holy cow yeah but there's seven bats in the lineup that they're going to have to replace The one saving grace for Tennessee Wesleyan, which I think is going to help them a ton, is they have, by my standard and by Cody Butler's standard, the number one pitching staff in the country coming back at this level. Uh, Two of those players are going to are obviously in our All NAI ball team, in uh, Kobe Foster and Robert Gonzalez at Tennessee Wesleyan. They lead the the list with three players making that list overall, with Zach Hoigason getting in there as well. Uh, Central Methodist is going to have to find a lot of new pieces. They have, in my opinion, the number two staff coming back. Nick Merkel's on our all NAI ball preseason team, but they're not going to bang as much. They're not going to hit a lot of home runs. 
Uh, they're going to be a team that runs a lot, steals a lot of bases. Southeastern University, year in, year out. Adrian Dinkle, one of those coaches that we were talking about, that's taken two different teams to the World Series, won a national championship just a few years ago, gets Drew Gillespie back. That's a big piece that they did not have for a lot of last season uh, in a, their pitching staff, which was an area of need and concern. Obviously, Lewis Clark State is going to be good, like they are good every single year. Uh, I think Sean Ross at Faulkner is one of the best shortstops in the country. I think that he's in a, a real draft prospect, which is something that we've been really hurting for a little bit the last couple of years with the shortened draft. Tim Bouchard at Kaiser is is just overly talented. He's made like three of our All-American teams in a row. Uh, Cody Muncy at Oklahoma Wesleyan's our reigning player, national player of the year at this level. Uh, they they come in at number nine. LSU Shreveport, man, you know, Brad Neffendorf has just absolutely relocked, reloaded. That's a team that went to the World Series last year. And their pitching staff basically all comes back, and they're going to be physical and athletic, and I think that they're going to be really good. Uh, University of Cumberland's is a team that fighting for Lewiston, trying to get in. It feels like every single year they're in the top ten. Every single year they're super competitive. Now they just have to go out there and win that opening round tournament. Thomas Gutierrez is going to be a big part of that. Um, I'm a little bit biased towards Loyola because that's where my head coach is. Uh, and, and I know he probably doesn't want me saying that on the show, but I, I do. I'm a big Loyola fan. Uh, and, you know, that's that's where Jeremy Kennedy is. The other one of those active coaches to take two teams to the World Series. And, uh, you know, they're super young. They made, they hosted an opening round tournament last year. It didn't go the way they wanted, but they're super young. Two of their three weekend guys last season were freshmen. So they are still very young and they have a lot of returning players, kids that are just learning how to win in a program that has not really won before. I think Vanguard is the best team in the West coast and they return seven starters. So that's kind of a look at, at the top, um, and by the way, Gwinnett showed you don't have to host the opening round to, no, to do yeah. some damage. I mean, they went out, you know, they they had a little Cross lull country. there and then went out to the West Coast and rolled through that and got hot late. And they they I don't know if you've if you've been to GGC's ballpark. That's no, but it, that's a good thing with NAI now with as many games are streamed. I probably watched <laughs> more NAI games last year early in the year before division one got rolling than i did anything else because everybody does a good job of streaming their games ggc with a with a wonderful stream uh, matt mahoney does a great job yep. out there at ggc and it, it's it's a really tough place to hit as somebody who's who's been there on you know more than one occasion and it, it is extremely hard to hit there they got out to california and all of a sudden you get to see a little bit of what the power looks like from that team because they were just launching the ball all over the place and it's like, wow, you know, if, if you didn't have to hit everything so uh, flat at, at GGC because just the way the wind blows and the, and the, the way the ballpark is, uh, it would be just the monster home run numbers that they put up like they did at the opening round tournament in California and then putting up some really great numbers with the long ball and hitting wise at uh, Lewiston, Idaho as well. I think one name that I want to give you, I, I've got to recognize this kid, Colton Williams from USAO. It's the first time in four years that they're going to be without Colton Williams. That's right. At, at USAO. That's right. He Guy didn't his, lose ever. Yeah, he one game ever. His <laughs> last game he pitched, of course. You know, the last game he ever pitched uh, it ended up being a loss. They did not have the offensive firepower that I think that they've had in previous years. Uh, Mike Cross, of course, now the AD tile taking over there at USAO, but I got to give a shout out Colton. You know, I think I want to say finished his career, something ridiculous, like 35, 36 and one. And uh, with a one, three, two career ERA, just absolutely insane in, in a team that's looking to reload. Uh, but they do get Luis Palau back, which is huge for them. And he's actually on our all in AI ball team. He did not play in 2021. He's been an all American twice before he is back this season. And I think that's going to be a big piece that uh, obviously if you ask Mike Ross, he would have loved that in the lineup hitting in the four hole last year. <laughs> oh, I, and I look up and down these, these teams with the coaches that are there and, you know, like Rich Benjamin, Indiana Wesley and Ryan Dupick at, at Concordia. Mm -hmm. the, I mean, and I know those guys and I, 
I say this all the time that there's so many good coaches. This is a golden era of coaches for college baseball at every level. We have so many good coaches and and guys that have been doing a long time, and we have some up and comers too. So it's neat to kind of see the evolution of coaching at the college level. It is absolutely incredible. You know, last season was the first year in the history of the podcast that we had uh, a coach of the year and an assistant of the year award. And our coach of the year ended up being uh, Ben Real from the uh, Indiana Southeast. Our other finalist for that was Ryan Dupic uh, from Concordia, Nebraska. Ryan's a great and story, too. He pitched for me at incredible. Iowa. Great kid. Um, really happy for Dupe and, and everything that he's done because he gets it like he does it the right way. He's really mm -hmm. in it for the kids. And so I'm glad that he's having success. It doesn't always mean that you're going to have success on the field. So I'm right. really happy for Dupe that he's got success on the field as well. How can he, and he's got to be excited. He's got eight of his bats from last season returning. Uh, it, it's just really, really exciting time for them offensively because I know they can hit. Uh, and so I'm really interested to see what he does with the pitching staff this year. You spoke about Rich Benjamin that he brought in, you know, Denver Blinn. Denver Blinn's absolutely legit. Uh, he was a guy that we really heavily considered for for our all NAI ball team. It's just kind of hard with the position that he plays and it, you know, Tim Bouchard being in the same position, who's made like the last three teams in a row, but they have six of their nine starters returning in. And so Indiana Wesleyan who got to host last year has a lot of upside. And that's, that's the really cool thing is for the last couple of years, it, it's really been Taylor, 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 Taylor. And now we're getting to see a little bit more of that Midwest competition out there. And I'm, I'm excited to see it because I, I love watching the point parks of the world be competitive in, in Pittsburgh and IU Southeast and Indiana Wesleyan and Taylor. And so there's going to be some really good ball clubs uh, that, that are going to be competitive this year out, out in the Midwest. And I liked Reinhardt's team too. I saw them quite a bit. They played GGC quite a bit. So I was, I, I did mm -hmm. like Reinhardt's team last year. So it looks like they've got some team, some guys back. Yeah. Reinhardt's going to be competitive. Their coaching staff is, is a one. I mean, you were just talking about good coaching staffs and, and I, I really, really think that, what those two guys in, in are able to do, it's it's going to be something special. And whether it's this year or not, the foundation that they're building for for the overall success of that program to continue. It, it's not something that's going to be set up. It's something to continue there at Reinhardt because they've made the World Series before and, and they've been competitive in the past and they have a beautiful ballpark with a really nice playing surface. So um, I'm really excited. And, and just like you said, you're talking about the golden era of coaching. Those are two guys there that are, that are a one in, in Burton and Moyer. And, and you and I were talking off air here, you know, everybody's getting a little taste of the Midwest weather throughout the country that they don't <laughs> normally get. So you and I have talked about that, the North Carolina, they're dealing with it right now. And down in Texas, you're dealing with it right now too. It is, it is way too cold in McAllen, <laughs> Texas today. It is, uh, let's see. <sighs> It's it's 37 right now, which is which is way, way, way too cold. So I don't I, I, I still haven't doubt. acclimated, which is great because it was 25 here today. And I'm sure my neighbors think I'm crazy when I'm out in the morning outside exercising when it's 25 degrees. I'm bundled up, but I, I still haven't <laughs> acclimated. I still have my Midwest blood. So I'm thankful for that. I'll tell you what, I, I'd like to know uh, what Derek Matlock at UTRGV has got planned today for, for the team. I don't know if that's an outdoor day for them because uh, it's, it's a little too cold. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to, you know, I can't imagine a guy committing here, coming down and being like, well, you know, tropical paradise and it's 37 degrees. Outside. It's hard when you can't feel your fingers and you're trying to throw a baseball. It is ridiculous. I, I remember there were some times in, uh, you know, as a guy that went to college in Dallas that, you know, you don't, you don't think of that. It, that was the first place I had ever lived outside of the Rio Grande Valley. And uh, you don't ever think it's going to be cold because it's always warm except for a few days a year. And oh, just ridiculous. That's one of the it's coldest ridiculous. games I've ever played. My sophomore year, we played at TCU on spring break and it was, it was 20 degrees and I had not been, I hadn't had too many of those, even though playing in the Midwest, it was one of the coldest ones I had ever been a part of. Nolan Ryan's son was on TCU's team back then. And, um, we beat them in extras, but part of it is their, their heater and their dugout worked and they gave us a heater that didn't work. So we were <laughs> extremely upset that our heater didn't work. So that was part of us beating them in extras. I want to say that the first road game I ever, I ever went to in, uh, 
oh, I, I want to say it was Southern Nazarene University and in Oklahoma, you know, it's basically Oklahoma City. And um, I want to say that that it started to snow in the middle of that game. And I'd never seen snow before. And so I was having quite the freak out and I was trying to play it cool because I'm just a freshman, you know. Uh, so, but yeah, no, it started to, to snow and that game actually got called. Uh, I, I want to say in like the sixth or seventh inning and uh, it just was, it became too much. And I really was uncomfortable there because I, I was not prepared for a, how cold it got. And we were just in Oklahoma. So I thought, all right, it's not gonna be that bad. No, apparently it gets cold everywhere, but here and uh, West Palm beach. And I, I want to say I was on the phone yesterday uh, with coach Mendoza over at Southeastern university. And he told me it was 75 in Lakeland. So uh, I'm, I'm a little bit jealous because that's the weather I'm supposed to be having and uh, didn't move from West Palm back home to McAllen to be cold. And you got some big news now. You got a player of the year award that you have named now. So talk about that. Absolutely. So, you know, the whole goal of NAI ball that Cody Butler, I, and, and now Connor Darnell, who's joined our team have is to continue to grow the game, to continue to highlight our players, to continue to, to build these lasting relationships and alumni base that's going to care about this level for years and years to come. And one of the ways that we feel that that's best developed is by continuing to honor and recognize our past. And so in conjunction and with help from the Baseball Hall of Fame, as well as with you know the blessings of his family, we have named our first ever award after someone, our player of the year award is going to be named after a player who did incredible things at this level, went on to become a, a major league baseball hall of famer. His autograph actually sits in, in my, in my room. One of my I've idols. Got, yeah. I mean, he's just an incredible somebody who personified class and excellence, both on and off the field in St. Louis in his time as a Cardinal won a national championship at the NAI level. The only historically black college and university to ever win a national championship at any level. He hit 545 his sophomore year. He is absolutely incredible. And it is just, you know, I wish he would have been here to be able to, to see that this is going to happen, but the NAI ball player of the year award going forward will forever be known as the Lou Brock award given to the best player position player in the nation that not just statistically is the best player in the nation, but also is, is just class and excellence personified both on and off the field. It is something that, that we are super excited. I cannot thank the Brock family enough for giving us their blessing to do this. I cannot thank the baseball hall of fame enough uh, for putting us in touch with the Brock family and helping us out. You know, you don't get too many phone calls from Cooperstown, New York. Roger Kador is going to be pumped. You know, this is it. I am so excited. We, we were really there are so many players that, that you can choose from that at this level, especially older players uh, that back in the day where, you know, I guess the NAI much bigger at the time, much many more schools uh, playing baseball that you could have chose from. I mean, we, we were thinking about Harmon Killebrew, College of Idaho. You know, uh, it was just so many guys that, that we thought about, so many guys that, have lasting legacies in major league baseball that are, you know, hall of famers, professional players, even some, some current ones, some guys who just had their playing careers in you're talking about bit, just a few years ago, Ben Zobris was world mm -hmm. series MVP. You know, he, he was, he's an NAI legend at both at ONU and Dallas Baptist. So it, it really, it just came down to, we thought Lou Brock made the most sense because he is a, uh, Really, when you're talking about baseball, people who study the game, people who learn the game, Lou Brock was basically the greatest base dealer all time until Ricky Henderson came along. I don't think he minded that at all. And then on top of that, you know, this is a guy that hit really well. And, and ambassador and of the game. This level really I mean, well. you, yes. you think about, you know, Tommy Lasorda, Lou Brock, just ambassadors of the game. Yeah, it, it just, and really, like we've, like we've said on the show, just personified class and excellence and that's the whole thing that that made us want to do this and so you know we're we're still up in the air about some other ones uh wh whether or not we're going to name our, our pitching award um 
I know the Colton Williams Award has already been suggested <laughs> for, for Pitcher of the Year. It's like the Cy Young Award for NAI. Yeah, you know, but but our our Player of the Year Award, uh, which is which we typically give to position players. Cody Muncie is our winner from the past year uh, at Oklahoma Wesleyan will now be known as the Lube Rock Award. It is something that that we are super excited about. I don't uh, foresee us breaking this news. This is the first place we've actually said it in public. Uh, so I know when the show comes out, this is something that is going to, uh, to I think, really excite some people. It's awesome. And um, I'm super it's gonna excited. It's going to open some it. eyes. I mean, for, for people that don't know the history of NAI baseball, it's going to open some eyes that, hey, Lube Rock played. NAI yep. baseball. Yep. It's gonna it, be awesome. it definitely is. It definitely is. And, and I think that there are a lot of coaches across all levels continuing that legacy and, and continue, you know, we're talking about, you're talking about major league baseball executives and, and GMs and, you know, director of player development presidents within MLB, not just that, but, but coaches across all levels of baseball and coaches across uh, the division one level as well. Edwin Thompson over at Georgetown, you know, Matt Deggs is, is a, a, an alumnus of my university, Northwood university, so that's that's a big one as as well. Rob Childress, who uh, you know is is an alumnus of my university, and that's something I take a lot of pride in. That that those two guys are also Northwood Knights, and even though we don't have a program anymore, you know we, we're still uh, alumni, and that's that's something that's that to be proud of. And so across all levels of baseball, what the do you legacy pay, has been built. What are you paying attention to here early tournament wise? You gonna be out oh. at all, or what? Do you, I know there there's usually some really good tournaments early. So what are you paying attention to early here? There there's gonna be some good ones the, the, out in the uh, you know in the in the West Coast uh, getting going with the first pitch classic uh, with Ari- in Arizona Arizona Christian and Joe McDonald do a really good job putting that on and uh, getting really good ball games early uh, as well. I will be making my first trip of the season uh, the first weekend of February. Uh, not a lot of tournaments for, for me just because of location base, uh, but I will be out in San Antonio uh, the first weekend of February on that Friday. I'm going to check out number two, Central Methodist, which will take on Our Lady of the Lake, who is a, a program that, that has a lot of kids from South Texas in my general area. Brian Ogney does a good job there. I'm excited to see Nate Breland, Rob Ellers, who is our assistant coach of the year as well at the NAI ball level. And then... I will cut across two hours on Saturday to Victoria, Texas, and I will watch uh, Terry Poole and UH Victoria take on uh, Loyola coming in from New Orleans. And, and so Terry Poole versus Jeremy Kennedy. And I'm, I'm excited to see uh, Coach K and, and Stephen Bruce out there in, in Victoria and uh, get to watch that game. And uh, so those are my first two games of the year. And then we'll just kind of go. I've, I've been keeping an eye on, on schedules. The Cajun Collision, though which is going to take place in Louisiana. It's really going to be hosted by uh, LSU Shreveport is going to be absolutely incredible. I think it's going to be one of the bigger regular tournaments in the NAI that's, that are going to happen. I know that there's been some talk about like an East West classic and, and uh, I believe that's going to start happening next year. Thanks to uh, some coaches, including Joe McDonald at Arizona Christian, but the Cajun collision which is going to take place, which is going to feature LSU Shreveport, who's, you know, number 10 to start the year. Uh, they will open that tournament with number seven IU Southeast. So uh, this is taking place actually starting February 10th. I lied. I'm sorry. Starting February 10th, LSU Shreveport takes on Central Methodist. So 10 versus two, then February 11th. I'm just going to give you some of the ranked on ranked matchups here. LSU Shreveport versus IU Southeast, Loyola versus Science and Arts. Uh, we were talking about Cumberland. Cumberland takes on Central Methodist. IU Southeast, Southeastern University out of Florida. You know, so this is a this Love is a it. big, big tournament. And, and all the teams in this, you're going to see Louisiana College. You're going to see Lawrence Tech, Tabor, Southwestern Christian out of Oklahoma, Jarvis Christian, Benedictine, McPherson. There are, this is a, a large tournament. Uh, that's going to span Thursday, Friday, Saturday out there at the Sterlington uh, Sports Complex in Sterlington, Louisiana. It's going to be this season the biggest NAI baseball tournament. It is going to be something that we are involved with as well as, uh, you know, just continuing to watch on a regular basis because there are going to be some really good ball games, five fields all day long. If you're in the Louisiana area, starting at 1030 in the morning, 
you got to go check it out because it's going to be some of the best of the best in the NAI. Love it. Get out there and support. So, Robbie, always a pleasure. Thanks for everything that you and Cody do. It's uh, It's been a really cool friendship. It's been neat to, to watch you guys grow everything. So I'm really happy for you guys. Ryan, man, thank you. We, you know, we, we're definitely appreciative to the, to the ABCA for all of that they do and, and uh, their, their partnership with NAI coaches at, at this level and continuing to help us grow the game. I feel like we have a lot of the same directives. I feel like we have a lot of the same goals and, you know, we got one of those accomplished uh, thanks to the coaches committee this year. Really excited for that. Keeping our tournament the way that it should be being competitive, getting the best teams to Lewiston. Absolutely excited for the season, man. Absolutely thankful that you're, you uh, allow myself to come on here and do this. So really thank you. And, and anybody who wants to follow us at NAI ball and for myself at Rob G one Oh six, three on Twitter. Get in there and watch some of the live streams. If you can't get out, try to get out and support locally. But if you can't, get on the live streams because you're going to see some really good baseball. It's getting better and better every year. Yep. That's the thing that we're most excited about is, is uh, streaming becomes better and better and better every single season in the NAI. And I remember the days when I would have to call my parents and tell them the final score uh, because they didn't, they did, there was no way, you know, exactly. and, and we were in Dallas. So yep. It's it's become better and better. Every everybody I feel like's got at least a stream now, uh, and we're watching more and more teams across the country every single week. Not not even month or year. Every single week we're watching more and more new teams across the country. This level is growing. We're at 189 teams, so we're excited. Yep, love it. Thank you, sir. Thank you.